Welcome to the Inside Syracuse Basketball Podcast, brought to you by Kraus Health, the official partner of Syracuse Athletics, providing the latest technology and expertise in the treatment of stroke and cardiac emergencies. I'm Mike Waters. Today on the podcast, I'm joined by former Syracuse basketball player Matt Gorman. I talked with Matt about the upcoming documentary, Will to Win, on the 20th anniversary of Syracuse's 2003 National Championship team. Well, welcome back to another edition of the Inside Syracuse Basketball Podcast. And we've got a fun guest ready here for us today, everybody. It's a former Syracuse basketball player and star of the upcoming documentary, Will to Win, <laughs> Matt Gorman. Uh, Matt, how are you, bud? Great, Mike. Thanks for having me. Star, well, we'll see. <laughs> Well, the, see, this is the interesting thing. You know, we're, <laughs> we're, we're talking here uh, a few days ahead of the premiere of the documentary that we've done at Syracuse.com. It's the a documentary on the 2023 20, team, 2003 team. It's the mm-hmm. 20th anniversary of yep, you and your you, teammates winning a national title. Yeah, can't believe it's been 20 years. Uh, you know, we were all, uh, we were back, you know, a couple weeks ago, uh, you know, kind of celebrating it, you know, you know, Akeem and uh, Jerry getting their, their numbers retired. It was just like, we're all like, it's been 20 years, man, we're getting old. We're getting old. <laughs> but it I was don't great. Know. A, a bunch of you guys look like you could still take the floor and beat a few teams. <laughs> we, I think so. We, we like to think that, especially, you know, when you get older, you get like, you get wiser and, uh, you know, that's, that's, that's the key. I mean, you're smarter than all, all the younger players. So you just know you can, you don't have to move as much. You just you you can see see the floor a lot better. Your passing is a little more crisp, and you just you can read the game better. And then you got old man strength. A lot of people forget about old man strength now. And now that we're we're older, you know, we all got old man strength. That's right. You know, and I I wasn't kidding when I said you're the star or one of the stars of this documentary. Um, I know you probably don't realize it because we interviewed you for this documentary a long time ago. I think it was like yeah. last August. Yeah, it was last summer. I uh, had a nice tan, I'm sure. Um, well, a little, you know, darker complexion from the from the summer summer uh, time being out on the water. But uh, yeah, we, you know, it's I'm looking forward to seeing the finished product. And I think uh, everybody uh, that's a Syracuse fan, even if you're not a Syracuse fan, you're going to appreciate it. Just from what I what I could see so far in some of the clips. Um, of course, we had you, and we we were able to catch you on one of your trips through the Syracuse area, which was great. Uh, mm-hmm. But we got a bunch of other of your teammates and former coaches too in it. Is there anybody who you're kind of interested in, in seeing on screen? Well, big perm, Jeremy McNeil. I'm hoping, uh, you know, I, I want to see, uh, you know, I haven't seen some of these guys, you know, some of these guys I haven't seen since, you know, it's been 19, 20 years. So I'm, I just, I'm ready to see uh, how, how much uh, people have matured and grown. I mean, you, you look at, you know, Akeem Work was always so quiet and reserved and then he was, you know, he gave, you know, speaking out in front of all you know, the audience. I mean, you're just like, man, he is a great orator. This guy should run. I was like, man, you got to run for office. Bro, what are you doing? You know, get get down on city council in Philadelphia, in Philadelphia or something, you know. <laughs> I mean, they're, they're great. I mean, he's got the charisma, you know. They're out there just, uh, you know, just just saying the things and getting the, getting the crowd into it. And, uh, you know, you, you just see that maturity from some of the guys since uh, since college. You know, and going back and talking to all you guys, you know what struck me, and, and I, I'm reminded of it now because you just mentioned Hakeem. So many of you guys from that team are coaching. Yeah. Including yourself. There's Hakeem, who's in the G League. There's Jerry McNamara, of course, here at Syracuse. Yeah. Um, Billy Edlin works with local youth here in the area. Yeah. He's not a coach in the sense that, like, you and Jerry and Hakeem are, but still, yeah. he's, he's coaching kids. In fact, you know, some of the kids that have been, you know, coached by Billy at a younger age include guys like Buddy Bayheim, yeah. uh, Symeer Torrance, Micah Adams Woods, Charles yeah. Pride, guys who played college yeah. ball eventually. And then there's yeah. Josh Pace uh, coaching right. the women's team at Western New Mexico. I mean, Mexico, yep. what's that say? Is it, was that part of maybe why you guys were so good then that you had guys who were going to see the games as coaches? Yeah, I think that. Uh... You know, when we were talking about that, we were like, man, your, your perspective from being a player to a coach has got to shift completely because now you're on the side of you got to deal with all the other things. You got to deal with, 
the emotional side. It's not just you come in and worry about yourself. You got to worry about 15 other personalities and try to make it work. Um, but I think as players, you know, you, you're always thinking, studying the game. And like we were always talking about basketball outside of practice, talking about watching other teams, like scouting teams, watching games, saying, oh, that's what they do. That's the play they run. So I think a lot of us were always kind of just coaching while we were playing. And, you know, so many of the walk-ons, they were, that are, they were always studying the game and they were always into it. So, I mean, we're always just talking basketball and, uh, you know, outside of practice and outside of our own, you know, we're looking at, you know, scouting our own opponents. We were watching other teams, watching NBA games and saying, look, this is what this guy does this is what he can do. You know, what, you know, how can we implement this into our game? So we're always thinking like uh, team basketball, but once you become a coach, you just realize, and it's, it's different because you guys say, it's not just, you know, you know, if somebody doesn't get this much playing time or they're not getting the ball, then you got to deal with that off the court and you got to keep people happy. Then you're having to deal with parents. You know, now you're having the calls from the parents. You're trying to, uh, you know, it's just a whole different thing when you're coaching from playing to coaching. Playing, you know, you think you had some pressure on you when you were playing, but then once you step into coaching, it's all a lot more pressure, you know, and a lot more responsibility. So um, it was fun to just chat and catch up about that. Um, you're going to not only see you, your former teammates and coaches on the screen next Wednesday at the Landmark Theater uh, uh, for the premiere, but you're going to get to see them in person too. Many of them are, you know, including yourself, they're, they're, you know, guys are coming to see this. I know you were just with many of these guys a couple of weeks ago, but maybe not who you're excited to see this time around because you need to see them. Yeah. But what's it like reuniting with, with these teammates and with these guys? Well, it's been great. Um, you know, it's huge because, like I said, it's been such a, a long time. Most of us are, you know, married with kids and you know, just just completely different lives, living completely different lives. You know, we're not worried about just the the minute to minute. You actually got to structure structure your life a bit more, and you have real responsibilities. But just getting back, I mean, we've, since we've uh, you know for a couple of weeks ago, we had a group chat going, so we're just staying in touch, talking. Um, so it's been great just to reunite and just connect. And you know, some of us have you know had some gone on and do some really cool things. I mean, you talk with Quet Dwayne about what he's done. You know, some of these guys, you look at Josh Pace where he's played. I mean, some of these guys have gone off and played some interesting places. Just have been around the world. You know, Quet Dwayne just moved back from the States, from from Kenya. You know, he's over in Nairobi, you know, doing stuff, you know, working. And just, you just to hear some of those, those stories and just uh, life experiences that some of us have had since basketball. I mean, basketball was just, you know, it was just a, it was like a, a ticket, an avenue to what, what your life is going to be 20 years later. So that's always like fascinating for us to get back together and just share and, you know, get to just hear about some of these life experiences for sure. Well, a couple of those guys you just mentioned, they are definitely coming to the premiere next week along with you. Quest Dwayne is coming. Uh, mm -hmm. Josh Pace is coming all the way from New Mexico. Yeah. And you mentioned this guy earlier, Jeremy McNeil. Yeah. And Big I'm so term. glad Jeremy's coming. Yeah. Because he didn't make it to the university's celebration a couple weeks back. Right. Um, have you, when, when's the last time you saw Jeremy? It's been since, uh, one more year after the championship year. So it's been 19 years. So it's been a while. And, uh, you know, I was, you know, my first day on campus, uh, you know, I, I was, uh, you know, looking for something to do that evening. And, uh, you know, it was like one of the first, after our first, like, kind of pickup games and, Big perm comes up and says, yo, Maddie, what are you doing? You know, and I was like, oh, just going back to my dorm. I don't know. <laughs> you know and, but he's like, you're coming with me. So Jeremy immediately, you know, kind of took me under his wing. And we just kind of like started hanging out. And uh, then we just started working out together. And, uh, you know, along with our strength coach, Todd Forcier. But, you know, we, you know, Jeremy had a, he had his own weight regiment, weight room regiment that uh, was a bit more intense than some of the strength coaches, uh, you know, a lot, a lot more lifting, you know. So it was always heavy, you know. I think I bulked up about 20 pounds uh, in about four months of uh, working out with Big Perm, so it was just great. Um, but yeah, I haven't I haven't seen him, and it's gonna be it's gonna be great to reunite with this. So it's gonna be a uh, you know some of the fans you know obviously haven't seen him since then either. So it's it's all gonna be everyone's gonna be asking questions, of what's going on, what's new with you, and um, I think he's gonna he's gonna be excited to get back and uh, see Syracuse. Listen, I don't want to give away anything that's in the documentary. Jeremy's a star of this too. Yeah, well, I'm sure. Jeremy I'm and sure. I, I, I've got to be honest. I wasn't. I didn't know what to expect because when Jeremy was a player and I covered you guys, mm -hmm. you know, he, 
he was a little bit um intro not introverted. I might be too yeah, much, but you know, yeah, he was intro. You know, the public guy behind, and I was the same way. You know, I, I look back at, you know, you look back to where that's that's the thing from eighteen years old to now. I mean, you, you people have say you know people always say you've changed. You're so much more outspoken because I would we go to class and. You know, we'd we'd hate to get called on, and we'd kind of go in there with our hood on, try and sit in the back. People people are gonna know who you are. They're gonna want to talk to you, especially like after a game or something. The next day, everybody's gonna want to come up to you and say, "Oh, you did how how'd that go?" And you're just you're like, "I don't want to see anybody." You're trying to hide under your hood, but you know, but yeah. I mean, you know, he was introvert, but when you you know behind, whenever you're off to the side, you're behind closed doors. I mean, just you know, just say speak freely and just be very you know calm and crack jokes and everything. So. Uh, yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be great to see see how everybody's kind of adjusted towards their towards twenty years from now. Yeah, back in the day, Jeremy was one of the toughest players I ever had to interview. He was really tough. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I tell you what, he's wonderful in this documentary. Yeah. Great, great. I, I can't wait. I can't wait to see it. You know, and that was a rough year for him. You know, a lot of people didn't know that, but he you know he lost his mother at the beginning of that year, in the fall, right before the season started, and it was just it. it you know, really crushed him. And for him, I knew at that point he was, he could have, he could have gone back. He could have withdrawn and gone back home. I think that's what he wanted to do, but he, he knew that his mother wanted him to stay at Syracuse and graduate, you know, and that's, and I think that was his drive and motivation through that season and uh, to, to stick it out and just and do it for, do it for his mom. What do you want to bet we get into that in the documentary? What do you want to bet? I, I would imagine maybe a little bit, Maybe just something. <laughs> um, I I, I kind of could see that, you know, because not I don't, you know a lot of people did, didn't know that, and uh, you know obviously I'm not speaking for him, but you know as his friend and just uh, you know just in confine, I just knew that he he wouldn't talk much about it, but I just knew I knew that was a, a big uh, motivating factor for him. Yeah, well, you'll have to see how that whole story plays out. Yeah. Um, and there's a few other really behind the scenes personal stories that we get from some of the guys. Um, I'm not going to even mention any more names, or else you're going to give the whole thing away here. Yeah, I, I, listen, I can't. Yeah, right. I, but uh, <laughs> I didn't know that, but I, I could imagine. Uh, you know, that's going to be one of those things that people are going to be like, "It's going to be an eye-opening thing." Uh, um, you know, that story is going to be unique. Yeah, there's a few things I didn't know about. I knew a little bit about the Jeremy story, and you mentioned it, but I'm telling you, there's a few things. There's beyond that that add to the, that story it's just amazing so yeah uh, that'll yeah. be a really cool part of the yeah. documentary and you'll yeah. see it when we get there um you are listening we need to stop and pay a few bills here matt hold on All one right. second let's let's thank a sponsor or two uh you're listening to the inside syracuse basketball podcast uh, i want to uh, say a big thank you to our sponsor um kraus health which is the official partner of syracuse athletics providing the latest technology and expertise for the treatment of stroke and cardiac emergencies. As always, we thank our sponsor, Krause Health. Also, I want to mention too, in terms of sponsors, uh, the, the Will to Win documentary, uh, our presenting sponsor is One Group. Um, you'll see their, their names, their logo all over the place, wherever it's associated with the Will to Win do documentary. So as long as we're thanking people paying our bills around here, um, thank you to the folks at One Group as well. Um, let me see, Matt, back to this. You know, um, I wanted to ask you a little bit about your teammates, and especially maybe the walk-ons. You mentioned mm -hmm. them before. And we interviewed at least, I think, four of your walk-ons because mm -hmm. we figured these were the guys who were going to tell us what yeah. really happened behind yeah. the scenes, right? But yeah. beyond what th that stuff, these – you guys had a, such a great group of walk-ons. Um, I used to see it in practice. They yeah. provided a challenge for you guys. They did. How, how important they did. were they to making that team as good as it was? Uh, we would not have we would not have won it without them, and that's that's the true statement. It's not just saying that just to be like kind. No, because you know they would they would push us hard in practice every day, and that was how that's how our team was. But particularly for them, I mean, they had a chip on their shoulder too, because they were they were coming out of high school. These were the top players on their high school teams, and uh, you know they were coming into practice. There was a time where the walk-ons were beating us in practice. I mean, they were like literally, you know, just like Coach Bayon went nuts, blew the whistle, stopped practice, 
and got into everybody. And, uh, you know, it was just, you know, everyone was cheering the walk-ons on on the side on the sidelines. I know the coaches were like, you know, assistant coaches were like, oh, man. But those guys, they were instrumental to our success because they were just coming to practice and, and work. They worked hard every day. That's what it was. I mean, they came in and would work hard. And, you know, somebody like, I mean, you saw Gary Hall. You see, I mean, you see Josh Brooks. I mean, you know, Gary, I always, you know, Gary would be down on the post player. So he's, he's going up. He's 6'5". He's about 280 now. He's like a bodybuilder now. But back then he was 240. He's still a big guy. But, uh, you know, he was so athletic guy, local guy coming from Tully. You know, like, you know, people from Tully are just a bit different, you know, They're built a little different, you know, from the, the, the Hall family. Um, you know, so coming from up, a guy you know, from Watertown, by the way. Yeah, right. Well, they tell, yeah, exactly. But, you know, I'm a North Country guy. But, uh, you know, that's that farm, Tully farm strength, you know, coming through. Um, you know, riding four wheelers, moving, you know, farm machinery around all, all your life. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, they come in and just, you know, he might, he might be shorter, but he's, he's, you know, they're pushing into you, they're hitting on you and they're trying, he's trying to dunk on you. So if you're not, you know, if you're not taking practice seriously, you're going to get, you get your scholarship guy getting dunked on or scored on by a walk on. Everybody's going to, everyone's going to notice the start when like say something to you, you know, so these guys were, were always playing hard, uh, you know, they were just always great to be around, great team, great teammates, just great friends. I mean, we were all hanging out. It didn't matter. And that was the thing about the team is the scholarship and walking out, guys. It didn't matter. We were all teammates. We all hung out together. It wasn't any divide. That was just on paper, really, when you think about it. It was just like, uh, you know, some guys getting scholarship. Those guys were hard workers. They went, you know, they did their schoolwork and came to practice and did everything athletically as well. So, um, I mean, that, you know, that, I can't say anything more, like, positive about that group. You know, I mean, just they were they were they were instrumental to our success. You mentioned Gary Hall. When we interviewed him for the documentary, it's clear he's on the same weight training program that Jeremy McNeil was on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I actually, I don't think they're in yeah. the weight room. I think they're in the parking yeah. lot lifting cars. Right. Yeah, I think that. I think that's you know, you know they're like a, you know just picking up like t you know just metal t tank tires or something and curling them out in the snow. You know, like stuff like that. I don't know. I mean, you know, Perm's down in Texas, but you know. Uh, well, now Gary's in Florida, but, you know, that was, that was kind of the, the strength training regiment they were on, kind of just like the the backyard, picking up sh scrap metal, lifting it over your head type type regiment, you know. So, um, but yeah, I mean, we had a great time. We'd all hang out, um, you know, and uh, it was it was great. I mean, it was they were they were just part of the team like anything else. You know, you were you were a big guy in, in, in college. So I, mean, I know you swung up between both forward and working out with the bigs that centered. Yeah. Which means you had a first hand up close look at battles between Jeremy and Craig Forth. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean yeah, Craig Forth was, was built like a redwood. Yeah, he was he had he had he once he once he was planted in the ground, I mean, you would have you know, it was tough to get him it was tough to move him. Um and that's the same thing. I mean, those two were going at it. Um, you know, me and Akeem would be going at it. And like, sometimes, you know, Carmelo would take it a little easy in the groups because, because he knew when he didn't want to get caught up too much in that fray down there, he'd like, I want to go, he'd, he'd want to go down and work out with the guards. And we'd be like, well, what you, what's the matter? You scared? You don't want to come down here? <laughs> you know, but, um, no, I mean, it was just a battle and, uh, you know, it got real, you know, practices always got physical and that was the thing. I mean, we just, when we were friends, but when we stepped on the court, it was all business and that was, you know. People were getting hit and getting elbowed, pushing at each other. People get frustrated, but uh, you know, at the end, whenever whenever practice is over, everybody was was was, was cool and respectful of each other after. So it's just that's the way it was. Yeah, you know, I think it's interesting too. Um, several of the walk-ons are making their way to the premiere. Mm -hmm. We were talking yeah. about that their their roles on the team and the the team chemistry, but the fact that I mean we. Obviously, we, we went and interviewed several of them, but the fact that Gary Hall, Josh Brooks, Ronnie O'Haran, Rev, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Tyrone Albright, you know, are all coming to the yeah, to the great. document to the premiere next week. You know, and that says something too, doesn't it? I mean, what yeah. does that get at? Yeah. But that's that's that gets at to my point, and that just verifies it that everybody was a part of that team. Nobody felt excluded. Nobody felt like, oh, I'm I'm a walk, you know, everybody was included. You know, Carmelo was treating everybody, you know, he's a star, obviously. Everybody in the country knew who Carmelo Anthony was, no matter where he went as an 18-year-old. Um, 
but he was, you know, everybody, the walk-ons are hanging out with Carmelo. Everybody's, you know, it's just, there wasn't any of this ego. I'm, I'm up here and these people are down there. There was none of that. And, uh, um, I think that, that, that just shows why those guys are coming back. Cause it was just, that was a part of, everybody was a part of that. You know, I want to ask you about Hakeem Warwick. Um, since you mentioned him as, as, you know, sometimes you were going up against him in practice. We've all seen the highlight reel dunks in games. You know, some of them <laughs> yeah. are famous and legendary. Mm -hmm. Did he save that stuff for games or would he do that in practice to you guys? Well, <laughs> again, he, he would, he would occasionally break that out in practice. They would do it. Now there'd be an occasional thing in practice, but you know, he was, he was well aware of, uh, his airspace, as I like to call it, when he goes up for a dunk, because he was high enough where he's got, he's actually got to defend his airspace, you know, and uh, he, he was, he was well aware that there was people that wanted his, that wanted his minutes and they were going to, they were going to try to stop him no matter the cost. So um, he had to be very mindful of who he tried to go off and dunk on. <laughs> I'm sorry, you know, I'm sorry to, I, I apologize, but when it came, I was not going to let Akeem work uh, Royal Ivy me. Any, any, any time, but uh, I know that goes for everybody. Uh, I mean, if he went up, some, some a forum was going to come up, uh, you know, and he just he would he would want to avoid uh, some of those mid air collisions uh, when he was up there because I mean he could he could just the thing about Akeem is his bounce was so quick and it was off the foot and it was he'd be flat footed. I mean, he could just pick up a ball and just go up so quick and just dunk it. I mean, that, he could get that, but when you saw him coming down and approaching from you know, 10 feet outside the lane, you knew what he was going to try to do and you'd get in front of him. He's like, he, you know, you make him think, you get him to think about it. And especially with like, uh, you know, Jeremy McNeil being a shot blocker and a big guy, he'd have to, uh, he'd probably settle for a, the, the mid range jump shot at that point. Once he saw, he saw some of those guys coming at him, that's for sure. You know, I would really be um, uh, negligent if I didn't ask you too about uh, your, your team, your teammate, your classmate, your roommate, uh, Jerry McNamara, Please don't give away any of the stuff you guys did in the documentary. But it's clear if you guys weren't successful in doing what you're doing already, you could be a comedy duo. <laughs> well, you know, you spend enough time around somebody. Uh, you know, unfortunately for him, he had to deal with me for four years as his, uh, his roommate. I always say that. But, uh, you know, we, we we know each other's personality so uh, so well that, you know, I can we can we can sit there and I know what he's thinking. He knows what I'm thinking. So um, you got that connection with somebody. Obviously that's, that's even without basketball. I mean, you just, once you know somebody's sense of humor and all that, um, I'm sure everybody has a friend like that. And uh, you know, so even if it's not, it, it would translate over to the court just playing, but you know, off the court, I already know what's going through Jerry's head and he can look at me and be like, I know what's going through his head. So uh, the, the dynamic was, uh, was, was good and fitting for, for the situation for sure. Again, I don't want to give anything away. But, but there, <laughs> I'm trying not to. Yeah. But there, there is, but, we have you guys on film basically making some admissions that I think you might be getting a bill from the university for. <laughs> well, I think there's a, what is there like a, like a, what's it called? You know, the, you know, it goes like some 10, ten years by, it goes by. Without oh, you problem. think there's a statute of limitations? Statute of limitations. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was a long time ago. It was, uh, you know, we're, we're grown adults now. We were. <laughs> You know, we, we could have been worse. I, I look back, you know, and if that does come up, you know, someone who works in higher education, I'll be like, you know, we were kids and uh, we, you're kind of supposed to do some dumb things. And, uh, you know, it could have been, I always, I always say it could have been worse. Yes. Right. It yes. could have been worse. Yes. Well, well, <laughs> I mean, a little loud music, a little late night. Well, yeah. Yeah. Just, you know, you know, just running around campus, you know, no big deal. <laughs> so it's there for us. So the campus is a. Uh, and it's an inclusive place. It was like an all, you know, Syracuse oh. University at the time. I mean, it was like an all-inclusive resort. You know, you didn't really have to leave. I mean, they had everything there. You had your dining hall. You had your internet. You just go to. I mean, you had to go to class. You know. But I don't think I've ever had, heard anybody refer to Syracuse University I mean, as an all-inclusive resort. Listen, you got you got to understand. You got to look at it that way. I mean, it's a it's an art. You know, it's kind of at times like an Arctic all-inclusive resort. You know. They just were missing the, uh, you know, there weren't as many ice sculptures as there possibly could have been, but to make it a little more uh, visibly appealing. But, you know, you have everything you need there. You never really had to leave. I mean, I lived an hour away and I never came home. I mean, I was up in water. I never came back to Watertown just because I'm like, well, everything's here. Very That's cool. why it was such a good time. 
I mean, you just uh, you go, you go, you think about it. You go for you go work out, you go play basketball, you go to class, and then you got all your friends, you got you know all your amenities that you need. So yeah, it's so it's like an all inclusive resort. Maybe that's the new the new pitch for the college. Maybe I don't know. Also, some stuff that didn't make it into the documentary, but it's 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 ample blackmail material. If I ever want anything from you or Jerry, I don't know if you know this, but we we shot you guys at the Mellow Center talking. We had you mic'd up. Yeah. And then we're not going to tell the folks here where we went next, but we were going to go to yeah. another location. Mm -hmm. And myself and our film crew, a couple other folks, Crystal Emchak, Lauren Long, Scott Tremble, we all met you at the second location. Yeah. I think you and Jerry forgot you were mic'd up and we could listen to your entire conversation well, yeah. in your I, car. And I said, and I said that to him, I was like, you think these things are still on? And I was like, well, we look at each other and we go like, eh. you know, well, it was probably on the mic, but yeah, we we're like, ah, whatever, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> who cares? Let them hear it. Doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I was thinking that, you know, I was like, well, at the end of the day, you know, they have a good sense of humor down at the post standard. So, um, you know, I, I think, I think it would be some good humor, some good material down the road, maybe who knows, <laughs> or, uh, you know, I'll be out of a job, no, I'm kidding. but uh, yeah. Or I'll be getting a lot of Jefferson community college gear next winter. <laughs> right. Hey, 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 listen, listen, we're, we're under armor. So, you know, we'll, uh, let you, we'll just let me know your size and we'll take care of it. But yeah, that's, uh, that's that's great uh yeah because i we had those mics on i was like are these things still on do you think that signal can get to them well like, any do you remember it, anybody coming over and turning these off <laughs> no and i was just i was like ah, whatever <laughs> whatever it's it's uh 20 it's 2023 you know whatever i'm Everything telling you cool. i'm telling you comedy duo gold just <laughs> gold it's, and and that uh, you know that's what's great uh you yeah. know i had i'll tell you this right now because i don't know i i so appreciate you and all of your former teammates giving us so much time in the making of this no absolutely uh, i mean this is this is uh this is something that's going to be shown to generations i mean it's that's that's the way i look at it when uh when 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 you first talk about this being put together and i was immediately like this is going to be amazing you know, because the last dance had just come out and it kind of gave all that, you know, the, just the way that people want to see that. People are going to want to hear the story because, um, you know, we're all going to get older. I mean, the, the, we're, we've been blessed. On, you know, that's one of the things I noticed is this, this team was blessed because everybody's in good health. Mm -hmm. Like all these guys are in good, good shape, good health for the most part. Like, um, you know, that's, you know, for some some teams after 20 years, I mean, they're not going to you're not going to see if some of these guys or hear from them or, you know, unfortunately something can happen, some physical thing or a terrible accident, but like we were blessed and uh, we want to be able to share this story to not only just the the current generation, but the future generations. I mean, they're going to have, you're going to have aspiring kids that are watching this at five, six years old. Like, like when I was watching Syracuse as a kid and dreaming to be at Syracuse one day, you know, there's going to be kids that get to watch this and then it's going to fire them up. They're going to, once they're done watching it, they're going to go out in the driveway and pick up a basketball or they're going to go down to the gym and pick up a basketball and get running. They're going to, you know, that's, that's the kind of motivation it's going to bring. I mean, I had old VHS tapes as a kid watching NBA superstars, you know, and then would go out and play and try to mimic those plays or, you know, in the driveway with my older brother. Mm -hmm. And I mean, this is something that kids are going to watch and get inspired by. Yeah, and I, I tell you what, you 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 were focusing just on the basketball aspect. I was also, as I've watched it myself, uh, as we've gotten to the final editing processes, um, I would think athletes and coaches in any sport could get a lot out of this to listen to you guys and listen, also listen to your coaches about team chemistry and bonding and what it took to come together to win a championship. I think uh, – all sorts of different athletic teams, not just basketball, could learn a lot uh, from listening to you guys. Yeah. It's it's really illuminating. Yeah. Well, that's good to hear. I mean, I like that because that's the thing. I mean, it, you know, it was like, and that's coming back to being a coach. I mean, you know, they they hear it from you. They can hear it from the coach to the the coach is blue in the face, <laughs> and sometimes it doesn't get through. But then they can watch something like this, or they hear it from somebody else, or somebody that maybe they looked up to, and when they hear it from that person, um. It just it clicks. It clicks for them. 
Um, you know, and like just coaching, I mean, you got a father or a parent will come up and say, I'm telling them what they got to do, but you know, you don't always listen to mom or dad sometimes. So whenever you hear it from, you know, another person or, you know, the coach is having a problem getting through to a player, they're hearing it from, you know, somebody that was in there in those shoes and then they, they can relate to that. And then it transfers over into their mind and they're like, Oh, now I get it. You know? So that's, that's, that's the, if that's what it can do, that's, that's even better. Well, we'll see. And uh, again, uh, I'm really looking forward. I, th I thank you for, uh, you know, participating in uh, both the interviews for the, the documentary. Thank you for joining us here today on the podcast. And I look forward to seeing you and the rest of your teammates on uh, Wednesday, March 29th at the Landmark. Thank you, Mike. It's going to be awesome. Brought to you by Kraus Health, the official partner of Syracuse Athletics, providing the latest technology and expertise in the treatment of stroke and cardiac emergencies.